What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Loon video and today guys some exciting news We're gonna be going over the new kit from Rachel Which is the brand new tank in the game and spoiler ahead She is going to definitely be one of the best Loons that you guys are gonna be able to add to your roster Just as a forewarning her kit seems pretty insane um, And we're gonna go over I'm not gonna go over too much into her stats and multipliers because we did get word from the CMs and the devs um, within the content creators, like kind of exclusive uh, chat that we have that they could change, but the skills and abilities, passive skill gem sets, all of the, the you know, the, the bells and whistles of her kit is going to be the same as of now. Now keep in mind, everything is subject to change down the line. They've done rebalancing of heroes, so that could also change in the future. But let's go into our, obviously she is a tank hero. Um, so first of all, we're going to look at her normal skill and her skill gem set. So pretty standard, fires an arrow at an enemy, so looks to be single target at maxed out level 6. Keep in mind this is not including level 7 if you guys are lucky enough to get her exclusive weapon. So, but crossbow shot is going to do 630 plus 1.23% uh, of physical damage. So she is a physical damage unit. Um, and then her skill gem set is a 5% chance of reducing targets physical defense by 10% for two turns. The 10% is good, but the 5% chance once again, showing that uh, very, very low on the skill gem set. If it was 10 and 10, that'd be really, really good, I think. But, you know, is what it is. So let's move on to her next skill. Um, which we're actually going to go into passive one. So Rachel's crossbow and Pavius are specialized in protecting others. Reduces damage received by 20% for all allies in the same row. That's absolutely insane. Um, this can be insanely good if you guys are going to be using uh, the iron wall formation. Where you're going to be using four front row units. Um, basically is going to be your tankers are going to be up front. Which obviously not really your tankers. But... The fact is you are going to have 20% damage reduction for all units in that row. So you could basically use her in that formation, or you could use her with Fahrenheit or another tanker, um, Nazar, you know, NMA, someone like that, and then have, have Rachel in your back row, and then have all your back row get that 20% damage reduction, and then you could have like a charge formation where your main tanker, like a Fahrenheit or a, you know, NMA or a Nazar that we talked about, could get that uh you know be the front tanking row spot just like all your units be super super tankies but an absolutely insane level one passive of 20 percent damage reduction is absolutely nuts there uh that's a that's basically having a free um free set from uh, the dragon you know the dragon gives you 20 percent damage reduction if you have a buff so if you combine this with that then you're talking about 40 percent damage reduction is absolutely insane and the thing to note is it's all damage not physical damage not magic damage all damage so an absolutely insane passive there so let's go into the next ability which is going to be passive two um so that is going to be um deals 100 percent or 100 plus 1p physical damage um Additional damage upon each attack obtained at four stars. So her passive two at four stars is going to deal an additional damage uh, upon each attack. So that, believe, that, that should trigger per hit, um, which means that she's obviously going to deal more damage for the more hits she does. So her kit, what it sounds like, is going to be doing multiple hits. So there you go. Pretty straightforward, um, but some extra damage there. So it's just... Very unique because she's a tanker that also deals a lot of damage. And we're going to get into that more in her special and ultimate as well. So very, very cool there as well. So let's go into now her passive three. Uh, when she is attacked by an enemy, returns 20% of damage back to enemy. So I don't think I missed anything in the first screenshot because they have to break it up in the two screenshots. Yeah, that's passive two. Uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope. Okay. So nothing important on the first paragraph of her passive. Uh, so basically, she has a built-in reflect. So is that's actually nuts. Um, when we will look at her stats a little bit, but I'm like I said, I'm not going to go too much in her stats and multipliers until she is officially released because that they said that is subject to change. But 20% damage back. That's absolutely nuts. Especially if you do want to run her in a charge formation, like against, you know, some of the bosses, for instance, and getting 20% damage back, that's just going to help you chip away, you know, way more and more and more damage. 
Um, she even could have applications in PvP of being able to kill units of 20% of damage. You know, that's that's back to the enemy. So keep in mind, this is only on her. This does not affect your whole team, unfortunately. But still, you know, single target damages um, that's going to go after her, you know, uh, could be absolutely nuts. Like a Baldur S3 in PvP that could completely come back on him, 20% of that damage. So that could be absolutely nuts, um, you know, in certain applications. And definitely for boss fights, for single targets on boss fights, like Trent's single target, when he does the, the big single target attacks. And then like a lot of the mob attacks, if they are getting targeted by Rachel, um, or Rachel, sorry, is getting targeted by them, then she's going to deal an insane amount of damage back to them. So that could be absolutely nuts. So all around, all three of her passives are very, very good. I don't think they're, you know, any of them are bad to where they're not relevant. So very, very good there. So that's the video. Hopefully it'll let me, okay, it will not let me go forward. So I got to go back here, go back into here. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going into her uh, abilities that consume souls. So first of all, ability two, ability one here is going to be channeling for three turns. During channeling, reduces damage received by 20% and distributes a single target damage. Uh, single target damage to an ally and Rachel's row evenly among, let me see if, uh, it's a little confusing. Okay, so uh, she holds up, begins channeling for three turns. During channeling, reduces damage received by 20%. That would be from her. So keep that in mind. That's going to be 20%. That should be 20% from her passive and 20% for, for this ability. So that's, you're talking about 40% damage. Then if you add in, like I said, the dragon set gear, that's another 20% damage if she's got any buffs. So very, very good there. And then let's go into the second part of her passive, which is going to be um, ch when channeling ends, she fires her cr crossbow. Um, or is it dealt damage to any ally and reaches the row evenly among allies in that row? So, okay, so channeling actually says, uh, so that should be the 20, the way it's, because it's hard for me to read because it's being broken up into paragraphs, but it looks like the first part is damage dealt to any allies, uh, any, any damage dealt to allies in her row. Let's go back. All right, during channeling, reduce damage received by 20% and distribute single target damage. Single target damage dealt to any ally in Rachel's row evenly among all allies in that row. Okay. So I think she reduces damage by 20% and then it evenly distributes damage in that row. So that should mean that you shouldn't be able to get overload on damage on one ally. So it doesn't reduce damage by all allies, but it's going to evenly distribute damage. So hopefully you're not able to get one shot. I think that's how that reads. And then when channeling ends, fires her crossbow to deal 1430 plus 2.82 physical damage to an enemy. So that's pretty awesome. And the fact is that this only costs two souls, very, very soul efficient. So that's very, very good um, in that respect. So that's actually really amazing. Uh, her channeling is very, very good. Gives you a defensive capability, evenly distributes damage, and then is gonna deal damage very similar to you know how a Caroline ability goes. This does last for three turns though. So it is gonna take a little bit of time for channeling to end. So just keep that in mind. But hopefully her uh, her kit, you know, you can switch her out. She'll have some decent speed, hopefully, um, to where she can get extra turns. So definitely, um, and then her skill gem said it's 5% chance of increasing Rachel's magical de defense by 10% for two turns. This is a skill set. I think you could just go full purple because I think um, trying to get more speed is going to be more relevant than getting a 5% chance of just magic defense. Um, so I think this may be the opportunity where you can go full purple set to get her more speed, my opinion. So, but that damage, multi that damage output seems pretty strong on her S2. So pretty darn good in my opinion. So now let's go into finally her ultimate skill. So draw a circle around her and a channel to uh, the energy of, to the earth, a bolt, and then fires it dealing 1300 plus 3.08 attack physical damage to an enemy deals damage uh equal to click the next deals damage equal to 30 percent of the enemy's existing health the amount of additional damage inflicted will not exceed 200 percent of rachel's attack so you want her attack to be very very high um when you're talking about skills so you may want to put her um 
just because of her abilities of tanking, you maybe want to put her on an offensive a gear set. Um, and then a 10% chance to stun target for one turn. That's actually really good um, if you need the stun. Obviously, most of the, if you're going to be using her for boss fights, you can't stun most of the bosses in the game now. But still, 10% uh, chance to stun. But it, it is giving you good uh, gems here with physical damage, which is what you want for her, um, obviously, her abilities for crits and physical damage. So, but 30% of the existing HP. Now, granted, cannot exceed 200% of her attack, but um, unfortunately, we do not show her attacks. I don't think in any of the screenshots here. Let's go back to the original. I don't think any of them shown her actual attack stats. No, so we don't actually see her attack stats in the information we were shared with uh, from a, a game bill in the CMs. But if she has some pretty decent attack stats, then that's going to be some massive damage. But a 30% of existing HP. So keep in mind of why that's relevant is because that means that you're not going to be hindered based on the maximum HP. It's going to be going on existing HP. So it's always going to do 30% of whatever they have. As long as um, the overall HP doesn't exceed 200% of Rachel's attack. And at that point, you're just doing additional damage of 200% of Rachel's attack. So, And it is going to be a 6 soul ultimate. So it is heftier on the ultimate. But still, that is a massive damage output for her. So I really love her kit that her passives all work on damage reduction. Let's go back to her passives real fast. Um... I hate that we can't go back from there. Uh, let's go back to passive three. So passive three once again. Um, and actually this does return 20% of damage back to the enemy if she is hit. So you do have a little bit of a passive damage um, on her passive three. So that's very, very good. And then our passive two, once we, get, we go into is going to deal 100% damage back upon each attack. So remember also, so we have passive two and three are gonna be doing damage. Right, so that's going to be uh, doing 100 plus, 100 plus 1p uh, of defense uh, damage for each attack, and then we have her passive one, which is going to uh, reduce damage for all allies by 20%. So very, very well balanced kit of having damage reduction, of having damage. Just overall, her kit seems to centerize so well. Um, and that she, the fact that she fulfills two roles as a DPS and a tank is absolutely nuts. That she fulfills two roles in one unique kit. So I think she's absolutely phenomenal, guys. I definitely think if you guys have any rubies, any tickets, hopefully you guys have been saving some of those event tickets that we did beginning. Even your premium banner tickets. Hopefully you guys have a lot saved up. Um, you guys didn't go too hard on Trent or Karu. Um, you know, everything you guys get from PvP this week, Dimension Gate, all that different stuff, Alliance Battles. Um, you know, Alliance bosses, save all your resources and summon on Trent tomorrow night. Um, hopefully you guys will be getting some more rubies also for the banner. Usually they give out like a hundred rubies or maybe a premium ticket or something like that. Um, you know, premium 10 pole ticket. So hopefully you guys have some good stuff saved up to where you guys can do some summons. I wish you guys all the best of luck and let me know what you guys think of Rachel in the comment section down below. Which of the three banner heroes was your favorite between Karu and Trent and Rachel. Let me know, guys. And I know we all got a bunch of tank seats because Faraday's the only legend tank in the game, unless you guys have been using a lot of seats on epic tanks. But hopefully, you guys have some seats saved up as well. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. As always, today, this is your boy for Misery Gaming. Don't forget to hit that like down below if you guys did like today's video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you guys are new. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next Alune video. Definitely leave a comment down below what you guys think of her overall, and I'll see you guys in the next